collective state, the Borg are utterly without mercy. Driven by one will alone, the will to conquer. They are beyond redemption, beyond reason. It is my opinion that the Borg are as close to pure evil as any race we've ever encountered. The Borg are a cybernetically enhanced hive-like entity with individuals from an unknown but very large number of species. Trillions of drones are organized into the Borg Collective. The Borg are obsessed with finding perfection and bringing it to the galaxy. As part of this pursuit, their unique ships play a critical role in expanding the collective and assimilating new individuals. In this video, we are going to look at the Borg ships that are available in Star Trek New Horizons if you play as the Borg Collective. This ship list is also available for their Rebel Factions, which include the Cooperative and Unimatrix Zero. This list will go in the order of when you gain access to each ship. Generally in the shows, Borg ships follow geometric shapes. This is also true in Star Trek New Horizons. The non-geometric shapes that are seen in the shows, such as the one used by the X-Borg that were led by Lore in The Next Generation, are not included in Star Trek New Horizons. Something to keep in mind about the Borg ships is that they pack more of a punch than their equivalents in other factions and empires. While it depends on your technology level in comparison to those you are fighting, if you were to send, for example, a Borg probe against a frigate from the Federation, it is likely that the probe will win in a one-on-one -on -one battle because it has higher armor and total weapon values than a Federation frigate, which is its equivalent. Another thing to keep in mind for all ships is that the total cost depends not only on the ship type, but also which modules you have installed. This can be altered via the ship designer window. The probe is the first ship on our list. The Borg probe is seen in Star Trek Voyager in the episode Dark Frontier, when Voyager tries to disable the probe and steal their transwarp coils. Otherwise, it is one of the most elusive Borg ships actually seen in the shows. However, it is a staple of non-canon material, such as the games Star Trek Armada and Star Trek Armada 2, where it is known as the Borg Interceptor, as well as Star Trek Online, where it has the role of a frigate-class vessel. In Star Trek New Horizons, you have access to the probe from the very start of the game, and it forms the backbone of your early fleets. The probe has three light beam weapons, here, here, and here, and two light torpedo slots, here and here. It also has four utility slots, one engineering, one tactical, one science, and one auxiliary slot. Each probe takes up six naval capacity. The Borg Cone is the first ship that you can research as the Borg. The Cone is never seen in Star Trek shows, but has been alluded to. It might have been the crash ship that the drone Hugh was rescued from, although this is never confirmed, and in Star Trek Voyager Unimatrix Zero Part 2, Axum is said to be stationed on a Borg scout ship patrolling in the Beta Quadrant. Theoretically, the difference between the probe and the cone is, apart from the shape, is also that the probes often patrolled or operated within Borg space, while cones went outside of Borg space. In comparison with probes, cones are smaller and hold fewer drones. In Star Trek New Horizons, the Cone is the first ship that you can gain via research. Note that it is weaker than the Borg Probe class, but it is also cheaper. The Cone is the equivalent of the Scout vessels in other empires and races, who also gain that ship class as their first ship research option. The Cone has two light beam weapon slots, here and here, and four torpedo slots. While this might sound like more slots than the probe, due to its size, it can only carry the miniaturized versions, meaning overall it will do less damage per second than the probe. The cone also only has one science module slot and no tactical, engineering, or auxiliary slots, meaning it will gain no buffs or give debuffs from these types of modules. Each cone uses four naval capacity. The Borg Pyramid is one of the ships that is not seen in the Star Trek shows, but it is very likely that this shape actually exists. It does in other Star Trek works, such as the video game Star Trek Legacy. The ship, however, has been included in Star Trek New Horizons as an equivalent to the Destroyer classes. The Pyramid is the second ship that you gain via research. Because it fills the role of a destroyer, it is stronger than Borg cones and probes. The Pyramid is also the first Borg ship to have variants. The first variant is the Space Superiority Pyramid, 
which has six turret weapons, four light torpedo slots, one light beam slot, and two medium beam weapon slots. The heavy torpedo pyramid has eight light torpedo slots, two turret weapons, and three light beam slots. Both variants have two tactical, two science, two engineering, and one auxiliary slots. Each pyramid uses 25 naval capacity. With the warp sphere, we move back into familiar territory with ships that we have seen in the Star Trek shows and films. The sphere is a long-range tactical vessel and was often used to scout new areas of space by the collective. We see several examples in Star Trek Voyager, for example in the episodes Endgame, Drone, and Dark Frontier. A sphere also makes an appearance in the Star Trek First Contact film and in the Regeneration episode of Enterprise. In Star Trek New Horizons, the sphere fulfills the role of a cruiser and is the third ship you can research. This usually marks the start of the mid-game. There are also two variants to the sphere, the heavy cutting beam sphere and the combat sphere. The heavy cutting beam variant has one medium beam weapon slot, three medium torpedo slots, and one heavy beam weapon slot. The combat sphere has six light beam weapon slots and five medium torpedo slots. Both variants have four engineering slots, four tactical slots, and one auxiliary slot. Each sphere uses 36 naval capacity. A ship that signifies the presence of the Borg Queen, at least in the shows, the Borg Diamond was seen in Star Trek Voyager in the episode Dark Frontier. In that episode, Seven of Nine and the Queen assimilated species 10026, and it was eventually destroyed when Voyager collapsed the transwarp conduit it was travelling in after Seven escaped aboard the Delta Flyer. In Star Trek New Horizons, this ship is not limited to just the Borg Queen and can be incorporated into your fleets. It serves as the equivalent of a battlecruiser. There are two variants, the Service Diamond and the Combat Diamond. The Combat Diamond has eight light beam weapon slots and three heavy torpedo slots. The Service Diamond has three heavy beam weapon slots and two heavy torpedo slots. Both variants have five engineering and five tactical slots, as well as one auxiliary slot. The Diamond uses 48 naval capacity. Arguably the most recognisable ship in the Borg fleet, the Cube is the ship that we all know and love from the Star Trek shows and films. From its first appearance in the TNG episode Q Who, more recently in Picard's episode Maps and Legends, the Cube is the terror of the galaxy and posed a significant threat to almost all species that it encountered. It is also possibly the most numerous type of vessel. The USS Voyager once witnessed a fleet of 15 cubes that would later go on to be destroyed by species 8472, who were also known as the Undine. It was also estimated that the Borg Collected had millions of cubes in the Delta Quadrant alone. In Star Trek New Horizons, the cube is a battleship that is unmatched. Cubes can take on sh fleets of ships and often win, depending on the relative technological levels, types of ships engaged, and adaptation level. The cube has six heavy beam weapon slots and three very heavy torpedo slots. Additionally, it has six tactical slots, six engineering slots, and one auxiliary slot. The cube uses 98 naval capacity. If the standard Borg cube wasn't scary enough, there is also a beefed up version that we see in Star Trek Voyager known as the tactical cube. We see these in the two-part episode Unimatrix Zero, where Voyager engages one with the help of a rogue Borg sphere. It also appeared in the games Star Trek Legacy, Star Trek Armada 2, Star Trek Conquest, and Star Trek Online. In Star Trek New Horizons, this ship fills a niche that not many other empires have an equivalent for. It is comparable to a heavy battleship. Tactical cubes usually have nothing to worry about in terms of a confrontation and can take on fleets with ease, especially if the Borg have adapted to the target's technology. The tactical cube comes with six heavy beam slots and three very heavy torpedo slots. It also has seven tactical slots, seven engineering slots, and one auxiliary slot. 
Each tactical cube uses 128 naval capacity. The last ship in our Borg ship list is known as the Omega Cube. While this concept was never seen in the shows or films, the creators of the video game Star Trek Armada 2 had an idea. What would happen if you took eight cubes and stuck them together to make one monstrously large cube that could never be stopped? This was the birth of what they called the Borg Fusion and Borg Tactical Fusion Cubes. In Star Trek New Horizons, the Fusion Cube is called the Omega Cube and is not a fusion of eight cubes. By this, I mean you don't have to build eight cubes and then fuse them together. Instead, you build this ship from your special shipyard, which is known as the Large Scale Shipyard and is a module that can be added to one of your star bases. For example, right here, Large Scale Shipyard. Only one Omega Cube can be built, although if that is destroyed somehow, you can rebuild it, although it is prohibitively expensive. The Omega Cube comes with eight very heavy beam weapon slots and eight very heavy torpedo slots. It also has eight tactical slots, eight engineering slots, and one auxiliary slot. The Omega Cube uses 258 naval capacity. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you have questions about the Borg ships, feel free to write them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. If you have any questions about any other aspect of the game, check out the playlist at the end of the video or in the description below for tutorials from myself and Cornish Ratbeard on the mechanics and gameplay of Star Trek New Horizons. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you around!